All right. Welcome to Good Morning Nintendo, where we come together every week to talk about video games we're playing and discuss news in the industry. If you are watching on YouTube, you can catch us on a podcast as a podcast on Spotify and iTunes. And also, starting now, we're going to be start streaming on twitch.tv slash thehylian. I might actually change that at some point so that it matches with everything else. But uh, let's go ahead and get started into it. As, as always, I just want to with... say one thing before yeah. we start. Um, I'm pretty sure that Dane is still streaming Persona. I haven't which, streamed that all week. Um, is a really good like stream game. So if, I would highly recommend checking him out because that is a very good game to kind of just relax to. But okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, right. I had to say that. But yes, as always, we're all. It's me, Dane. We're joined by Dom. How you doing, Dom? What you been up to this week? Platinum Spider-Man, which was like... Okay. Um, it's a good game, but I don't think it's like... <gasps> like I don't think it was like gr- groundbreaking or anything. Um, like, it's a Spider-Man game. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I was just like, yeah, this is fun. Woohoo. But I wasn't like... It's not like Game of the Year material for me or anything like that. It was just like, yeah, this was pretty solid. Uh, I, the combat is really annoying after a while. It's just so like, like oh gosh, it's so. And the enemies are really annoying because it's the same enemy, just a different skin. It's the thug with the shield. Then it's the demon with the shield. Then it's the sable guy with the shield. And it's like, oh, okay, so. <laughs> um, but there there were some cool cinematic set pieces. There were the. The story was actually pretty. I did, honestly, I would say Yuri, Yuri Lowenthal was like one of the like he he just knocked it out of the park. Like there were some legitimately like good moments in there. Where I was like, you know what, I like his job. So yeah, um, platinum that, and now I am playing uh, Twilight Princess on the <laughs> Wii U and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. I just want to go back to Spider Man for a second. It's just like, it's just like yeah. I mean, like, I actually really enjoyed the combat. Like, it felt fun to me. I mean, like, you do, you are completely right, and I will agree with you on, like, you just have the same type of enemies, just with different skins and all that. But, like, later on, like, when I was doing the achievements and, like, they made you, like, okay, you need to get, like, this rank doing this challenge, or you need to use this item X amount of times, or this gadget X amount of times, I actually... I actually like those achievements because they made me play different, which was enjoyable. But, like, yeah, I mean, like, the combat isn't, like, when you get to, like, that 20, 30 hours and you're cleaning up for achievements, like, yeah, I understand, like, it gets, uh, starts wearing a little thin at the end. I'd say the bosses were great. Like, one-on-one, not, like, mob fights. Bosses were really, really fun. Um... I would have probably would have preferred a like a health bar instead of like um instead of um um shoot instead of um uh what are they called um oh my gosh um action commands instead of um action commands when it's like you pretty much know you've defeated the boss when you know L1 and L2 pop up on the screen I would have preferred an actual like oh a health bar for the boss okay because yeah. I thought you were talking about Spider Man for a second I was just like he yeah, does have you do have a health bar for you yourself I was just like I was confused yeah, there for was a second like, pretty much you would you know it's the same run around and then like once I would see like oh it's prompting me to press triangle at a certain time I must have won and then like that was that um but the, it was it was still a solid game totally solid game I would say it's worth like twenty bucks. <laughs> Yeah, like I mean, if you can find it for twenty bucks, pick it up for sure. I just I don't think it was like I think it was probably the one of the first like super solid superhero games. So I think that's and of course Marvel at the time. Marvel was still popular, but it was Spider Man. So, but I think good job Insomniac did a great job, and I'll definitely play Miles Morales. I just well, I don't want to. I can't. There's no way I'm gonna jump right into that after Spider Man. But uh, what about you? What have you been playing? I have been playing a lot this past like week or two like i like there were some, some things i wanted to talk about last week which but i kind of like all forgot about because we put this section at the end last week because i was juggling things all uh, so i started trying to do intermittent fasting um this past week or two 
and that's been going like hit or miss it's just like it's been weird some days like but all in doing that i also tried i've also all been borrowing my dad's oculus quest 2 to oh, wow. play beat saber so like for the first time ever i've played beat saber and i mean like i feel like like i'm super late to the train to the party on this one but like beat saber is really fun and like I've like I get like half an hour into that and like I feel all the sweat on my back and everything. It's just like it. I'm I'm enjoying that. That was fun. All um, but also this past week, I tried playing the Median on Game Pass on my PC, and like I sent you a link and I all um, put this in the Instagram story yesterday. Was like. And like I, it could I could get it to run pretty decently or pretty like well potato. most of the time, but every time like I zoom in on any like document or picture or anything, it's just like, yep, that's blurry as all get out. All the median isn't really kind of my type of game. Like I enjoy like spooky, scary. Like I got pillows here that say like "Ticket to My Nightmares" and whatnot. That's cool. I'm not really a horror person though. It's just like all, oh. but like that, like playing it on my kind of like my powerful potato PC, like it wouldn't load in a lot of those textures, and there were bits in the game where it's like it, I kind of benefited like from that. Like there's a doorway that's covered in skin, in that game, and it just kind of looked like Play-Doh most of the time, like like a gray, like a lush toned Play-Doh. But on one of the doors, like, it actually popped in all the textures on the door. And, like, you're cutting the door open with a razor. And I'm just like, mm-mm, no. I'm, like, I'm like holding down the thing, like, looking away from the screen. I can, so, like, I can definitely do, okay, I, this is weird. I can do survival horror, but I could only do Resident Evil. Just because the formula in Resident Evil is so addicting, it's like, it's it's like the oh, oh my, it's like soothing. I love it. It's, it's literally it's the, you know, like the aesthetic. It looks great, but it's like okay, I have ten bullets, and I need to get to like the other side of this mansion. How in the world am I going to do that? And mm. it's essentially like figuring all of that out. Uh, the puzzles are great. Um, the the, just the, oh god, god, I love those games so much. But the gore side, like oh yeah, it's gross. There's definitely points I'd close my eyes during multiple, even Resident Evil Four, which I I was still like spooked out with that game, which is um uh, you know the but uh, the tone. It's, I love those games, but like I can't do like Fatal Frame or like or the meat games like that where I, I those I can't do. I just like Resident Evil because like there's also a like Resident Evil I can kind of goof at sometimes, like oh like hee hee ha ha. Um, but that's as far as it goes for me. I can't go any further than that. I mean, like it's it's not, it's fun that you um picked up on Resident Evil because like that's actually something I was thinking about a bit as I was playing oh, this good. game. Be not like I haven't played Resident Evil, but like most what? of my experience with Resident Evil is like watching people like show like the like the classic Resident Evil with like the tank controls and like complaining about the tank controls. And this is like the first game that I've. I think I've played ever, if not like for the first time with tank controls, because like that it like it has like that kind of thing where it, like it switches between different perspectives and then like it's just, yeah like, I think this... I saw something like that it was like a uh, I also it was one girl with white hair and one girl with not white hair <laughs> oh well, well it's the same person but like with the white oh, hair okay um she's in the spirit realm like that's her spirit version. And then, like, the not with, like, her regular hair is the physical world. And it's interesting because... Like natural projection kind of thing, or...? Well, like, he, like, she sees both worlds at once, and that's kind of, like, one of the big selling points of this game was your... It's rendering, and, like, how, like, why it's a next-gen exclusive is because it's rendering two, both of the worlds at the same time. So in so you'll get a wow. split screen playing the game where like on one side you're looking at the physical world and then on the other side you're looking at the spirit world. So it's 
And, like, there's some neat mechanics that have you bouncing between the two or, like, doing what a thing in one side and that that affects the other oh so it's it's interesting but like at some but some most of the time like you are focused in on one side or like just quickly glancing over at the other but oh like i got i played about like two hours of the game but then i got to like this stealth section and i was just like nope nope can't do this I'm not about to, I'm not about to play, I was just like, I, like, it just didn't, I just stopped at that point, because I was just like, I don't think I can give this game a full, like, proper review or first impressions or make a good video on this, if, like, so, so much of it is, like, so much of my footage shows, like, this game running poorly, and I don't feel like that's fair to the game, trying to put that footage out. But, oh. Speaking of um, first impressions, I played. Uh, did you play the Balan Wonderland demo? Yes, I wanted to get to there. I was just trying to figure a way out of the median. Oh, but the median was interesting. But I wanted to just quickly talk about. Uh, actually, now we'll get past it. Oh, well, yeah, I played the Balan Wonder World game. Oh, demo. What? Yeah, that's like that's exactly what I was thinking. Is just like this demo, like made me lose all interest in the game what are your thoughts on it i've been talking for a bit um it's so freaking just like bull like i like the music i like the aesthetic i like the world but uh the controls were terrible like first of all you have you can only jump yeah every literally every single button besides the um the analog stick is, is to jump yeah you just just jump. You can only jump. Like really? Like that's barbaric. Like not even like a slide. So like, any it's a three D platformer. Like all I can do is jump. And then okay. even and then, with some of the the abilities that you get, you can't even jump. It's yeah. just like oh, and then you have to get a key to use the like. It was just like what? And I don't know if you noticed this, but when you jump, there's just like it almost feels like you jump. And you're being pulled back a little bit. Like, I felt like it wasn't floaty at all. Like, I felt like as soon as I jumped, it was just like, I, like, I would jump and it would, like, it was just really weird. I mean, for... And then the power-up that you get, um, you get a key to, and then you unlock, it, it, oh, gosh, I'll buy it when it's, like, 20 bucks. But I'm, oh, I'm not spending $60 on that game. No yeah. way. It, for me, it just, like, it felt big for being big. It didn't, like the world felt empty. Like, it didn't feel like... There's all these gems to collect, but I didn't feel a motivation to collect the gems. It's just like, okay, I'm yeah, doing this, like, but, sparkly. like, why am I doing this? Yeah. All, but, like... And it sucks because um, I wanted to back that game because it was Yuji Naka. Like, the guy, he was behind Sonic. I'm like, oh, he's got it. And a huge push from Square Enix, so I'm like, this has got to be good, right? And then you're just like, ugh, this is just kind of blah just bland i mean like yeah that's the thing it's just like it like it visually has bland style <laughs> like it has a lot of visual style to it but oh yeah it is just like when they but like the gameplay is completely <gasps> bland doesn't it doesn't it kind of remind you of um billy hatcher yeah i mean like that's what it that's what it kind of reminded me of it's just like i but even that like i remember enjoying when i was a kid rather yeah. than oh i love the music in that game but all, but like the thing is, I the the game that I've actually like been spending a lot of time on this week, and I I want to because this relates to it is Jack and Daxter: The Precursor Legacy. What's that? What is that? The... It's a PS2 game. Like you don't you don't know Jack and Daxter? Is that the first one? Yeah, it's the first is that one. The first one. Yeah. So that I I really so that's all on PS4 and PS5. You can buy your that audio kicked, that's kicked on out. sale right now for like five bucks. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um they're they're on PS5, right? PS4 and PS5 right now for like five bucks. And I I watched my uncle play all of those and I have a lot of nostalgia for Jack and Dexter. But I'm just like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> like I just it has the same like those legacy games like that, I feel like I've I've already played them, but I haven't just because they're so like here, here, I hey, like to though. I do hey, like them. 
hey, I need to tell you something. Jack and Daxter, it's a 20 year old game. It holds up. All right. Really? Yeah. Like, I, like, like I hold, haven't played like, hold, it, but like, like, holds up like, holds up like. It is fun to to play today. All right. Like, I, like, talking like Ocarina of Time. Yeah, one, up, one second. Let, like... let me, let me get, let me get through this. I have never played Jack and Daxter, the precursor oh. legacy before, before this week. All right. And I got it on Tuesday. I platinumed it yesterday. All right. So I, oh, oh I might buy it for an easy platinum. <laughs> I mean, like, it's a, I mean, it's a 10, it's a, like a 10, 12 hour game. All right. Like, and like, you Wait, may need you can platinum the, you get tr actual trophies for the, uh, for the PS2 games. Well, because it was, um, re-released, like remastered as a PS3 game as a PS3 oh. collection. So it has, so it has trophies for all of them. So there's trophy support on those nice. Yeah, but all oh, it's, but like I've never, as someone who's never played it, I can, I feel like I can say that game holds up. It's just like the only criticism I have for it is like it feel like the double jump feels a little weird because like it feels like there is like a window frame, like like all like there is a frame for when you can actually hit that double jump. It's not like from when you jump to like when you hit the ground. It's less like it's like in that like top, like it's like in the top bubble of like your curve that like you can hit the double jump. All and it doesn't really tell you all of your move sets off of like all of your move option movement options off the bat, but like I like as my first time playing the game, it was an enjoyable game for me, and the thing that like kind of surprised me and I felt a little old like a little awestruck about was it like there's no loading screen in the game at all either it's all like I mean like I'm sure they're doing the thing where like you're running through uh like a canyon or whatever like where the visibility is short and then like it's loading the whole area on beyond that but like I thought, like, that was something that I thought was really cool, because I was, like, looking back, it's like, when did this come out? 2001? And, like, comparing it around games like Banjo-Kazooie and stuff like that, where, like, there are tons of load screens and everything, and if you die, like, most of the time there isn't, like, a long, drawn-out, oh, there isn't, like, some long, drawn-out, like, death animation or cutscene. It just bring it just pops you back all into the game like almost instantaneously and like so it's like okay i died i fell off the cliff there but like we didn't have some long cutscene, and it was just like instant and like most of the time few instances like the checkpointing felt a little weird but it's just like you're close enough most of the time to to where you died so it's just like it was for a game that is 20 years old like i definitely have to say like Go out, get the, like, the Jack and Daxter collection is 15 bucks right now. Go buy it. Wow. That strongly? You can get it all three games. Yeah, I mean, like, I bought, like, I bought the the first one on, like, it was Monday or Tuesday or something this week when it was still for, full price at $15 and the collection was $40. I was playing yesterday and... There's a whole retro, um, retro and remake sales on the PSN right now, and the collection is like fifteen dollars now. So after buying the first one on Monday, I went ahead and I bought the collection. This was like for fifteen dollars. Wow. Yeah, this was like, and I've heard a good, lot of good things about Jack too, as well. Like um, a podcast that I've mentioned before on here, the top one hundred games. Oh, podcast with Jared Petty. Someone came on there and named Jack Two as, oh, as one of their picks for the top one hundred. Wow. So, so like I like I've it's something that like if I had been playing the PS if I had a PS Two when the this game came out it's something that I would have bought and I probably would have had the same nostalgia for as I do with Banjo Kazooie and other games of that type of ilk now.
Yeah, I just I just looked on that sale. They also have um Dark Cloud one and two. They have some they have some pretty good PS2 games. Rogue Galaxy. I might actually. Oh um, yeah, I I totally went through there and I just I bought a bunch of stuff. Like I bought like some Depon like Deponia the Kurt like all yeah. goodbye Dep- no it's also chaos on Deponia like those were like a buck something each and they're like apparently they're good games. So they're, the Day of the Tentacle remastered I picked up. This is like I bought like a half a dozen games all on that yeah, sale. Yeah, I'm gonna do the same. Honestly, they have some pretty sweet games on there. It's and I didn't even know that some of those so that you could play some of those games on there, which is pretty sweet. All right, I finally finished my long rant of games I've been playing all this week. But like, but like to bring it back to Balan Wonder World or Wonderland or whatever it is. This is like go if you want a like a platformer adventure game that's like fun to play and has like I don't think the music ever really stood out to me much in Jack and Daxter, but like it's a like go play that. Like it's so much better. It feels so much better than Battle and Wonderworld, in my opinion. Alright. Now moving on though, I wanna start with I wanna do some we're gonna do something new here with a little discussion piece. So question on my mind is when are we going to get another Nintendo Direct? It has been 512 days since the last Direct, and 92 since the last Mini, which I think was the one focused on Universal. Oh, what what do you think? When do you think we're going to get a, another Nintendo Direct, Direct, or do we need to get another Nintendo Direct? It's tough, because the... Right now, the Switch is just riding off of being the Switch. Like, it's just doing so well, where I think Nintendo doesn't even really need a Direct. Um, But a Direct would be great. (laughs) I would like one, but I've kind of given up on that, just because I feel like Nintendo's taking a very cautious approach to to everything going on in the world. And they're saying, we are not going to give you a... Even though every Direct they've given, I don't think anything's that they are that they, they have published and that they have admitted or told us has been delayed has like everything they've released to us they've never said like oh it's coming out this day and then delayed it and if it, it could have been internally delayed that we didn't know about but for the most part everything's been pretty pretty good yeah that's... Um, i feel like they do need to have one though just because you're you're in the entertainment industry you got to give people even though you're you're you know you have the hot commodity you still have to say hey like, look at these cool things that are coming, too. Now, I don't even know what, like, we're in a weird spot with the Switch. What could even be in a Direct right now? Like, an, uh, isn't Zelda's 35th anniversary next month? Yep. Or that's supposed to be starting, like, this year or something like that. Maybe. Maybe they take the same approach they did with Mario last year and have a kind of a... A center direct on that. Whoa, may okay. I'll, I'm going to put money on that. I'm going to say next month. I'm going to say next month. Well, I think next we'll get a Pokemon direct on the 26th or 27th, but we will also get a direct highlighting Zelda for the 35th anniversary. I'm putting money on it. Man, I think next month, like if we get any sort of announcement from Nintendo next month, I think we get the Nintendo, we get the Pokemon direct. All oh, sometime next month, but I think based off of how things have been handled so far with COVID, is that we're gonna just get all, oh, which I'm called. We're just gonna get like one trailer dropped in next month on the YouTube channel for some sort of new announcement for all oh, for like some Zelda title, like some Zelda remaster, or Zelda all oh, game coming to the Switch. I mean, like, because that's personally what I've been thinking with the Nintendo Directs is just with the fact that Nintendo's clearly been holding everything pretty close to the chest. Like, I think we found out about the, like, officially found out about the the Mario collection, like, two or three weeks before it came two out. Weeks. Yeah. No, I think it might have been three at the most. And, like, I think with all... Um, Age of Calamity, we probably, I think we found out about that like a month or two ahead of time. So I think like Nintendo's whole strategy during COVID has been just like, let's hold everything close to our chest and we'll, 
let people know when things are coming out when we know that they're coming out because like back when the we I mean the switch hole first launched like we got announcements for bayonetta 3 and metroid prime 4 and like it's almost become like a meme of people asking well where are they so i think i feel like nintendo's just gonna continue holding on to their news until they're ready to make a full announcement before all for the foreseeable future Maybe once thing like when we're not dealing with COVID anymore and like things are back to normal, we'll all we'll go back to them. But I don't think to be expecting a full on regular Nintendo Direct that isn't like situated or pointed at one thing in particular. Yeah, um, I would, I would, yeah. The only thing I could really think of is just them highlighting Zelda and Pokemon. Honestly, other than that, I really don't have any ideas of what what they could do i definitely don't think they'll do like a a general direct like we've seen in the past at all i think those are going to be gone for quite some time to be honest yeah all right all right sorry about that folks oh uh, we just had a minor inconvenience there oh uh, maybe i should stop putting things to default and actually tell my computer what it needs to be doing but anyway we're going to move on with our first story of how much stock in GameStop stock is GameStop can stock stock? Nothing. Nothing from you there? No reaction? Okay. Right. Oh. So, the big news, of course, coming out this week has been the whirlwind sort of situation with the games, with Wall Street Bets and okay, and how they've been implementing GameStop stock. All oh, I just have a short description here of how of what is really going on here, because it took until, like, this morning for me to actually figure out what was happening, all what what people were doing. So, like, this is a description of what's going on. A short is when you borrow a stock from a broker and sell it immediately at its current price. Then you hope the stock's price falls such that you buy the stock back at a lower price and return the shares you borrowed to your broker, but keeping the difference. Example, let's say I want to short XYZ, which has a current price of $10. I borrow one share and sell it immediately at $10. I have $10 now, but I owe my broker the one share I borrowed. Then let's say the price of XYZ drops to $7. I now decide to cover, buy it back, my short position and buy one share at $7 and return the one borrowed share to my broker. I make $10 when I sold. And only had to pay seven to buy it back lower. So my profit's the three dollar difference. But now let's say that instead of XYZ price dropping to seven dollars, it goes up to fifteen. I still need to return the one borrowed share to my broker, except now it's going to cost me a lot more to buy it back. If I buy it back at fifteen dollars so I can return the borrowed shares, my losses will be the five dollar difference between selling at ten dollars and rebuying at fifteen. Since the price can rise indefinitely, my potential losses as a short seller are unlimited. At some point, I have to buy it back to return the shares I borrowed. The more the price rises, the bigger my losses. Now for GameStop. A few weeks ago, a Redditor r slash Wall Street Bets noticed that a hedge fund had taken a massive amount of short trades against GameStop. They convinced everyone on the thread to join forces to buy as much as GameStop stock as possible. This made the price rise and the hedge fund's short position started to lose billions. Their losses even surpassed the $13.1 billion that the hedge fund was worth. Eventually, the hedge fund had to close their short position by all the GameStop stock back at, at much, higher, much higher prices, sending the price even higher still. This is called a short squeeze. Now the hedge fund is declaring bankruptcy and the Reddit thread is coming through the other hedge funds with massive short exposure so they can short squeeze them into bankruptcy as well. All of Wall Street is saying that the public joining together in this fashion should be illegal, but really they just lost at their own game through their own masks. Okay, that last bit gets a little bit editorializing there, all there, but like, what do you think about all this, oh, Dom? I think it's hilarious, honestly, that... Um, I mean, like, dude, it, the game's not fun when you're losing. Like, 
it's pretty much you know that 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 that's that simple it's ridiculous um i think it's funny that gamestop was like <laughs> of course right gamestop <laughs> um but yeah i mean it's, it's just it's ridiculous like you it is a free market at the end of the day and just because you were losing your game and it's not fun anymore it doesn't mean you can that's just i don't know it's not right i think there was a lot of good that came from this to be honest i know some people i i read so much stuff on the internet about like people affording things they couldn't they didn't have um people taking their animals to the vet paying bills that they couldn't pay for because of this and it's like oh cool like poor people get money awesome what's so wrong about that and it's like one billionaire like a couple billionaires have one less yacht this year like it's it baffles me it blows my mind but i do think it's funny that at the center of all of this there's gamestop <laughs> yeah it's just like that's that's the only reason that we're talking about it here it's because it's gamestop of course but like it's interesting to me and i mean like yeah like people are upset because they're, they're losing the game that they've been playing like a bunch of like normal people, like people that don't usually play the Wall Street thing, are or have like outplayed them at their game. But like, I'm, I mean, we obviously don't know how Wall Street works between the two of us. It's just like I'm, and I'm like I'm happy for these people, and I'm glad to see them stick it to a hedge fund and everything. But like i'm all like i'm a little concerned like what does this do down does this do anything down the line like is this gonna screw with other things it's just, like i like and that stuff i don't know and what that seems to be like the big thing that a lot of people don't know because like we've something like this hasn't ever happened before as at least that's what my current knowledge is so if something like this hasn't happened before, what does that mean? What is that going to mean going forward? And it's just like, it's, it'll be interesting where we are. And like, I'm sure we'll be hearing about this all oh, about the ramifications of this, like for the next few months, if not longer. Oh, but yeah, it's interesting. That's where I'm. Oh yeah. Um, it's, these people the, that have started this subreddit and made this move uh, aren't going away. Like, I feel like they're, they have seen what they can do and like, it's, it's now a game and they're, they're in it too. They're playing, they're having a good time. Um, and not to get too political, but at the end of the day, realistically, the government will step in and probably, and something will happen just because, you know, Money talks, and these billionaires are going to be like, well, we're tired of this, and they have a lot of money, so they'll make it go away if they really, really want to. Yeah. And I was watching one news report where a news anchor was like, well, isn't that the same thing that you guys, like, that she was, they were talking to a hedge funder, and she was like, well, isn't that the same thing that you guys do? And he was just quiet. <laughs> so I was like, what? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Enough on that, I suppose. I mean, like, the whole thing of, like, talking about, like, this, sh like, short song stuff, it's just, like, that's playing, that's doing the same thing on a much smaller scale, but, like, someone comes in and they, they run it back on you, like, you get upset about yeah. it, it's just, like. Seriously, and then the crazy, like, not only, like, really, what, if they were to just straight up short, like, in all honesty, that would, that could, that could ruin, like, GameStop if they were, if they accomplished that. GameStop could have went under for that, and then people lose jobs. Yeah. So it's just like you know, like, oh, cool. Um. So like on the on one side, you literally have GameStop going out of business, people losing jobs, and capitalism at its finest, and greedy billionaires making billions of dollars. And then on one side, you have GameStop does well, people are making money, people get to keep their jobs, good things are happening. <laughs> like, where is the argument? <laughs> All right, I'm going to go slightly askew of this now because you just said something that, like, brought up something else that happened to me this week. Oh, and, it, like, I think it's, like, becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy with me in GameStop. So it's like I say I don't like GameStop and I just continue to have bad interactions with people at GameStop. 
It was just like, so the other, like, I went in the other day to trade in my copy of Control because, oh, that's going to be a free game on PS Plus next month. So I was just like, well, I don't need a physical copy of it if I'm going to get it digitally next week, next um, week or whatever. So I went in to trade it in and like usually like I was just like, oh, there's nothing here I really want right now. So I'll just trade it in and get a PS Plus gift card. And like I I oh, I'm trade in the stuff. I'm just like, oh, I'm going to get this. And he's just like, it's just like, so you don't care if GameStop goes under. I was just like, I don't really care. It's I'm not have no stake in this company. And he was just like, well, then you, you don't care if I lose my job. And I was just like, yo, 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 hold up. That's not how you should be talking to a customer. All right? Like, it's just like, oh, in my personal opinion. It's just like, and then like, he goes on this long rant about how I can't trade in a game and then use that trade credit to buy something in the, buy, to buy a PS Plus card. And he's just like. I'm sure you can do whatever you want with store credit. Yeah, it's just like. It's just like. from a previous employee. <laughs> Yeah, like no, we're both previous employees, and like this guy's like, well, apparently, well, you're you're you could cost someone their job because we're apparently not supposed to do this anymore. So this is like, okay, so I'm trading this game in for eleven dollars, and I can't use that store credit to buy some to buy something in your store. It's just like, but if I traded it in for cash, I could it would be fine for me to then buy a PS Plus card. Like that's some bull, some BS. What store did you go to? Um, our old stomping grounds. Um, over oh, at Watch yeah. Apple. <laughs> I know who you talk to. Yeah, not a good chap. Um, it's just like that's that's bullshit, in my opinion. Yeah, this and it like it only hurts you. Like, dude, I'm giving, I'm still giving you my, I'm still, you're getting the store credit. Like, what, what? Like, why would you even say that? Why would you be like, oh, no, you cannot spend this money here, actually. <laughs> like, what? And, like, he, like, acted like I was, like, he was doing some, me some big favor for oh, letting me spend the money the how I wanted to spend it. And, like, that's... I also wanted to use, like, a $10 off coupon, and then he's just like, oh, you can't use that. And, like, that I understand. It's just like, I didn't read anything. Yeah, it's just like, the last time I was in that store... I used like my five dollar voucher or whatever on a card for digital currency. Yeah, it's just like, and he's just like, okay, you can't do that. And I just like, I don't remember them changing the rules on that, but that's something I could easily understand them changing because that's or like something I understand. Like it's just like you could easily change the rules on that to say like you cannot use this on this ten dollar voucher on digital currency. Like I can understand that change. Oh, at one point, because, like, that's that's your reward currency. That, like, you can make up the rules on how you use that money you want, how you use, how that thing is redeemable at all in your store. Like, I get that change, but, like, telling me that I can't use my store current, like, it's still $10 or, like, it's just, like, I could trade it in just directly and, like, skip this middle step where you have to hand me the cash all and whatnot for a few bucks more but like that's that's bs in my opinion say telling me that i can't use that money to buy a ps like the the trading credit to buy a ps plus card yeah, yeah so it seems like an employee who does not know what he's talking about oh but yeah but apparently his, oh this brings me to another thing oh apparently his wife works at bethesda and apparently oh He's he can he could, he's telling people that all of the like even though Microsoft hasn't made an official statement on it that all all Bethesda game that all Bethesda games moving forward will be all will be exclusive to Microsoft where they haven't made a statement on that yet and it's just like you yeah, should be walking around telling people that oh yeah first of all his wife probably doesn't second of all um so. Microsoft bought the the company that owns Bethesda. Yeah. So obviously acquiring Bethesda through that. Um and technically, technically 
there's still contracts that Bethesda has to honor. So some games will still come out on other consoles because there could there's games that have probably been been in development for who knows how long, and Bethesda has to honor that no matter what. Also, knowing Microsoft, they could straight up be yeah sure you know we'll see how this goes like it's like I mean the smart thing to do would be <laughs> to you buy like this is Microsoft for you they bought Minecraft but yet Minecraft is on everything like. So knowing with that, knowing Microsoft, it's going to be, I don't think there's really going to be a lot of true exclusives from Bethesda on Xbox, which there should be, but it's Microsoft. We, I don't know why they do half the things they do. I really don't. It's very, they're very, they're an oddball to me. I don't get it. Yeah. Apparently you also, the guy also apparently had some beef with PlayStation as well. And I was just like, I don't understand. I mean, I can understand not being all... Like, just not being, like, there hasn't been anything, like, big wrong that, like, Sony's done. So, like, all it just really came across of was him being very fanboyish, in my opinion. And it was just like, that's not really something that I want to get from someone that's work that, like, behind the counter. It's just like, you're going to be very fanboyish and, like, console warsy uh, while you should just be informing me about the products yeah, oh, well, oh just, it yeah he seems like he's a fanboy yeah just overall i just had to go on a little bit of a tirade now that i that we brought up gamestop and everything this is like this just feels like a self-fulfilling prophecy like i go into a gamestop and I just continue to have these very bad interactions with their staff i generally have pretty good ex expect um experiences when i go into gamestop just because i I mean, you put the the bull crap like from the get go. I'm like, look, dude. I always start with I worked at GameStop, and generally that helps me a lot. But, yeah. Uh, oh, I've worked here. It's like it's like that the mask comes off right there, and I'm like, I've worked I've worked at GameStop. They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's just like great, because most GameStops when I'm like, yeah, I used to work at GameStop. They're like, oh, okay, cool. I don't have to tell you all this crap. And on every time we say it, they don't ask anything, which is great. But um, I know the gentleman you were speaking about. I actually worked with him at a location, and you know what he told me? What? He told me that he owns, um, I'm forgetting the name of the sword, and I, but he owns the sword from Lord of the Rings that Frodo used. Like the original hero prop? Yeah, he owns it. He said he owns that. He also said that his neighbor bought him the Kingdom Hearts 3 PS4 Pro for his birthday. I don't know. Like he's a he's a very my uncle works at Nintendo kind of guy, kind of guy. Okay, so this is like oh, uh, so your so your neighbor bought you this thing you own. I mean, like I don't really believe that he owns the original hero. So your neighbor prop. bought you this thing that was exclusively sold online in very limited quantities, and it was four hundred dollars. Interesting. And sounds like like that's the one thing a neighbor would just like yeah just no like I just no you and just wife works as but at Bethesda <laughs> yeah it's like okay yeah I, I don't have I don't have, I don't have much let's get off of this um sass train <laughs> while before we get to go get too derailed on it oh uh, all right but anything in regards to the stock is there anything more that you wanted to add or. Or should we just move on to the next thing? I honestly, though, I hope it helps GameStop in the long run in some way, shape, or form. Um, just because me personally, I do. Here's the here's the reality of it that people don't realize: if GameStop goes away, all physical games are gone. Point I, blank. Period. I wouldn't GameStop say that. Is GameStop is still the largest video game retailer in the world? Not in a storefront, but in a sales front, too. They literally sell the most video games. So when that happens, you, like, video games, physical video games are going to, I mean, not immediately, but they're definitely, th that's pretty much the icing. That That's the moment of, like, we got them. Like, there's, I mean, don't get me wrong, Target sells, but a lot of places sell video games, but they're not, obviously, they're not dedicated to video games, but their sales pale in comparison to to. GameStop, um, they, I mean, they sell enough to, to warrant selling video games, but it's not enough to warrant video games as a whole. If anything, it would be like, the, it would be dialed back heavily, or you'd, you'd only see first-party stuff released. You don't get 
the um, cadence of Hyrule releases. You don't get Shovel Knight releases. You don't get uh, Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. That stuff goes out of the window immediately because those larger retail stores aren't carrying that. Excluding Best Buy because they've started taking some limited run stuff for some reason. But yeah, that stuff like that goes up, which sucks. That's why I want them to stay around. I mean, and at the end of the day, yeah, some of their business practices aren't the greatest, but you know, I find cool stuff in there. Um, lately, they've been doing the whole collectible thing, and um, I could care less about that. But dude, I still go to GameStop and find complete box DS games. So like, if they could stay, that'd be great. If they could be less GameStopy, <laughs> that'd be great too. Yeah, I mean, like I think like they try and like say like we want like to like be us both were haven't worked there. It's just like they try and say like oh we want to create this environment where people can come in and talk about things and like be like the corner stop store like comic shop type thing where you like go in and you talk to people and you discover new things but like every time like i just continue to have these very not consumer friendly conversations with their staff and it's just like when you like do these things that are like well i shouldn't be when you say things like well, I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to help you out anyway. Or like, you tr like you like you make it seem like you're like you're like you're like I'm giving you such a tough tough time trying to do one little thing. It's just like it doesn't make me want to come back. It's just like if you just say yes or like be more open, like do like just be. M more consumer friendly is just like if you you if i came in there and like i was just like i just had a good interaction with someone and it was just like like the last time i went in like before this um i went in and i um, was talking to the guy there and it was a different guy and he was just like he didn't give me he shit about hat what yeah did he have long hair or hat uh or he both? probably had longish hair um, was he? Did he, have he was. He was about tall, as tall, like around my height. Um, thin build. Yep, that's the uh, store leader. Super cool guy. Really, really cool. Yeah, but the, 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 his time. ASL. I was talking to his ASL. His ASL. Um, was like I did not enjoy talking to, but the SL. Like I went in there and like we talked about different things. It was just like, um, what did I pick up? I like, I think. What game had I... Oh, I traded in Phoenix Rising. And, like, I talked to him about Phoenix Rising. He was just like, oh, I picked this up, but I haven't gotten into it. What are your thoughts? And, like, I kind of told him how I felt about it. And, like, I had a good conversation with him. And, like, I enjoyed talking to him. And that's, like, the kind of the reason why I went back to that store this time. Was because I actually had a good and fun interaction with with that guy. And I was just like, I was just like oh, this, was, this guy seems pretty cool. I was just like... I didn't tell him about our podcast, but, like, he's someone, like, if I had one in there again and, like, had another fun interaction with him, I'd probably have told him about this. And, like, maybe he would have been fun to have on one night. One night. Yeah, he's he's really cool. Um, I've, 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 well, I've known him for a while. Literally, ever since the last SL left, I've uh, always gone in and talked to him. I was just talking to him last week, and he always, though, like, kind of hide games for me like if something cool comes in he'll like let me know like hey are you interested and i picked up um pokemon mystery dungeons explorers of sky which if you don't know that's the like rarest mystery dungeon game it's around 100 bucks and he's like dude do you want it and i was like yes um yeah he's so cool so cool he does he won't hassle you he'll ask of course but he won't like say like are you sure if you open it it's gonna explode if you don't get the warranty kind of thing um but yeah, he's super cool dude, and it's and it's there's a lot of GameStop employees like that. It's just the ones like the first gentleman we were talking about who just royally screw up the name, like royally screw up the name. Because I have, I'm and you have too. Um, well, I'm pretty sure you have. Have gone in and had a good like bar talk experience where you're just gonna cut like, and it, I think GameStop could totally do that, but you need they need a like. They gotta they gotta figure something out in terms of a good rhythm because like I wouldn't want to go into a GameStop with that guy being the SL like no no way. All right, well let's move on then. Uh, so I recorded a video on um, last week that was 
about this, but oh, I kind of want to get your thoughts on it. We got a last week we covered Xbox Live trying to increase their prices, and one of the things I think we missed trying. on that, yeah, that we missed in that conversation, like I don't think we hit on it, was the fact that it was going to be doubling their price for the year for new incoming yeah. people, and I don't think that's something we brought up in the conversation at all. But they decided later that evening they came back and they recanted their statement and said like, oh, no, hey, we listen. We're not about that. We understand that, that you guys don't don't want the, the increase in price. So we're going to keep it the same. And we're going, and one of the big conversation pieces was free to play games. Like on Xbox, you needed to actually have gold in order to play games that were free to play online. So they were just like, and do you know what? We're not increasing the price, and we're going to unlock Fortnite and other things of that nature so that you don't need the Xbox Gold to be able to play them online. So what do you think about this, Dom? Um, I just think it's Xbox being stupid old Xbox. Like I just don't understand a lot of the business decisions they make. Um, for... Uh, of raising the price, especially with a global pandemic, probably not the smoothest move. Probably could have held off on saying something about that. Was it a ploy to get people to jump to Game Pass instead? Um, maybe. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, I just, I don't know. And then, don't get me wrong, like, unlocking a free-to-play game is smart, but, like, I mean, there's probably 20 million people, or, you know, obviously that's an exaggerated amount, but there are probably a handful of people who are like, oh, cool, I'm never buying this again because I only bought it for Fortnite. Um, I, I don't, I just don't get Microsoft. I really don't understand why they make the choices they do. Um, it, I, I don't get it. So many things they say, I'm just like, what? Like, why? <laughs> Why? Like you made Nintendo's online sound good. <laughs> That's when you know you did terrible. Like, oh gosh. Yes. What is your take on this? What do you think? Do you think that it was a ploy for Game Pass, or do you think it was just Microsoft being Microsoft? I yeah. I mean, like that's kind of the general consensus because like, even in their article where they told first came out and said like, oh, we're changing the price. It was just like, it was just like they said like, hey. You could just for a little bit more, you could get that game pass here. And it's just like, so I definitely feel like it was kind of a ploy to try and push game pass a bit more. Or, and it's just like, I think game pass is a good value if you're actually using the games. But I actually went in this week and I canceled my subscription on game pass. Cause wow. like, here's the thing like, I, like for the past while, I thought like I still had like a few months on it or whatever. Or, like, I had, like, because I had gotten, like, all, oh, I had gotten, like, a big thing where I, like, had two years of, like, gold and Game Pass, and I eventually, like, merged it into Game Pass Ultimate, and, like, I thought I was still, I still had X number of months on it, but the thing is, like, I've been paying for, like, the last two or three months for it, $15 a month, and I haven't used it at all all the past couple months i think the last game that i really played and got usage out of it was all spirit bearer and that was like last spring or like sometime in the fall i don't know when did that game come out all that um and that was the last time, time I, ago. that was the last time i really made usage of I think it. it came out around the xbox series x also so so it was sometime in the fall but so i I mean, I got, I played it then, but, like, I don't think I've been getting my $15 a month out of it. And right now with the PS5, I don't really, I don't really have major plans to play on Game Pass because a lot of the games that I'd, ra I'd rather be playing on my, on the PS5 and getting the trophies for it because I just enjoy trophies more than I do getting achievements. Yeah, there's a weird sense of accomplishment when you platinum a game i mean here here's you know, a i understand why people strive to do it so much but for me it's like you, i really have to like the game and the only reason i platinumed 
Spider-Man is just because I just loved zipping around that game. Like it was like, I didn't want to put it down because it was just so fun to just like to be Spider-Man. Um, in my- a lot of the trophies in games are so like just minute, just so tedious, like stare at a wall. Like there's a trophy in Castlevania Symphony of the Night where you have to sit down in a chair for like 10 minutes. God. Why am I doing that? Like, is that like, this, this doesn't do anything for me. Um, so it's tough for me to like platinum a game. Um, but one thing I wanted to touch on really quickly because uh, we we're on the topic of Microsoft. So I have I own the Xbox Series X. Um, I, I sold it, but my intentions for this generation was third party Xbox Series X, first party uh, exclusives, obviously PS5 exclusives, obviously Nintendo. But I don't think I'm doing that anymore. I think I'm going to stay with my PS5 because I've been thinking about it, and I just, I just don't like Microsoft's approach to things anymore. Like I don't like when I look, when I look at the PS5, it's game centric. It's focused around stellar games, amazing games. When I look at the Xbox, it's just like accessibility. The user interface is nice. And I'm like, I don't care about that. Like, I just care about playing awesome games. Yeah. And so I think I've kind of just nudged out Xbox completely. And I've tried. You kind of hit on something that I kind of wanted to talk about it with the median and Game Pass. But I felt like we had been talking about it too much. Was with Xbox Game Pass, like one of the big things is just like Xbox first party, stay in date. But when you like the median though is one of their first all oh, big first day game. and dates what that's a first party game from them yes yeah, that's why it was such a big deal it, it's like their wow. it's their first all oh, console like ex- next gen exclusive game which was why like i thought it was a big deal to try and cover it was but like it's a 10 hour experience and it's like it's a horror game which is already kind of niche in itself but like and i mean like this is the thing is like i'm not of course playing it on its intended hardware so i didn't feel like it was really all it was really getting into it but like there wasn't a whole lot that was like was making me say wow this is really cool like the rendering two worlds at once is a bit interesting, but like it's an interesting gameplay mechanic, but like it wasn't doing anything crazy big for me at all. And like, I, oftentimes, like it isn't really even fully utilizing that two worlds mechanic all that much. It's just like this could easily just be done in like one world. It's just like. Oh, it's neat that it's rendering both of these things at once. And, like, at one point, at the later part of the game, it did just start rendering one world where you were only seeing the, seeing the spirit world part of it. And I was just like, okay, this is... I mean, you got rid of, like, the rendering the two worlds thing. And, like, apparently from people that have played more of that game, like, you're only... It's only, like, 25% of the time that it's doing that. So it's just, like... It's a fine game, and I think like a lot of the reviews are scoring it at around like a six or whatever. But yeah, that's that's yep. I I that's just that's just what it is. Just like with it, this Xbox, it's just average. Yeah, it's just but like that's the been the trend for Xbox recently. Is like yeah, all like what was the Crackdown? Crackdown three came out, and that was just a okay game. It's just like yeah, but, so middle of the road. It's just like Microsoft needs to turn it around on the quality of their first party titles. If getting a day and date type, if getting a day and date Microsoft title is going to continue meaning anything for Game Pass at all. So it's like, okay, you you have 200 plus games, but like they're all fine double A quality games. They're not triple a like oh wow you gotta go out and you gotta play this man i was like i just played this new game and i love it It it's just like they're like they don't have anything that's like on like hype level coming out day and date on that yeah and speaking of speaking of game pass microsoft has said that i think they're around at that at 18 million subscribers on console pc 
and a phone. And like, I, I don't know. I don't how far, like, I think they need to drop like trying to push these services so much. I mean, ne- Netflix just hit 200 million subscribers. How long has Netflix been around? Yeah, it sounds like the and Wii. Netflix is so accessible. It's like six bucks or whatever. Boom, you're in there. Yep. You're telling me you're trying to reach that that market. I got to buy a console. I got to do so- whatever it may be. I got to do something. It's just not going to happen. I thought it Netflix really was like isn't. 15 a month now. Oh, geez. Um, and I, I think they need to, like, I think, like, think about Microsoft in the 360 era. Man, they were, like, so awesome. Like, but going back, it just to... sucks that, that we don't get that quality anymore. It's like, well, we have this cool Game Pass thing. It's like, no, I want, like, good games. Like, give me some good games. I mean, like, Netflix doesn't all, like, back then it was, like, an aggregate for everything else because it was streaming when, it, like, nothing else really had hit the streaming market yet. And now, like, a lot, like, everything else is, like, pulling out of Netflix and creating their own thing. Also, like, but Netflix has come out and made stellar, great, all exclusive content, like Stranger Things or, like, Queen's Gambit. Like, when those things come, like, there's a lot, I mean, you get a lot of B-rate titles as well. But, like, a lot of, all, a lot of, like, like every month or two, Netflix has, like, some big thing that pops up. And it becomes like a cultural moment where everyone's watching that one thing. Oh, and I, I like, just don't think it's the same Microsoft... way with um, Sony's releases. Like, it's a big deal when Sony releases a first party game or when Nintendo releases a first party game. Like, it's a big deal. Like, when Ghost of Tsushima came out, everyone was looking for that. Everyone was was hyped for it. When Spider Man came out, when God of War came out, it sold phenomenally well, made a you know, everyone a bunch of money. It was like a big thing where gamers could be like, yeah, like, woohoo, this is it. And I know me and you, we've kind of given into the hype and bought some of those games day one, and they might not be for us, but it's still like, cool. These, you know, ga- good games that people like, this is nice, where it's like Microsoft, it's like, eh, like, like they, it's like they have to like email you to remind you about it. <laughs> it's like, hey, don't forget about our game. It's like, um, I don't think I'm ever going to play it. I'm sorry. I mean, like, the only thing right now, like, their biggest, like, they bought all this stuff, and they announced a whole bunch of games, but nothing has a release date yet. I mean, the only thing I'm really looking forward to that's technically falls under the Microsoft bucket is they bought Double Fine. And, like, I haven't played a whole lot of Double Fine stuff, but every time I have picked up a Double Fine game... Yeah, it was just like I love Psychonauts. I actually tried get jumping back into that this week for for to finish out achievements, but like trying to collect all the figments is a nightmare. So I kind of dropped off that real quick. Oh, but like Psychonauts was fun. Oh, like I really loved Le- oh, Brutal Legend, and like they're like these comedy satire types of games, and like. Oh, Psychonauts does some cool stuff with storytelling and its worlds and everything. As was like, so like I'm I'm all in for like a double fine game, and I've been looking forward to Psychonauts too. But I'm pretty sure that was oh like a Kickstarter game where they announced that up before they they were bought out for Psychonauts two, like Psychonauts two. So I'm pretty sure that's still coming to PlayStation. Oh. So, like, even then, this is like that's I'm gonna buy I'm gonna buy that when it comes to PlayStation. I could be wrong though. I should double check that. But yeah, that's where I'm at with all well, with with Microsoft and Xbox right now. I I don't think they have anything coming down the pipeline that I'm that I'm like hyped for, and I tried like they just. Like, they just don't have anything. There's no true, like, I know it's been beaten to death, but they have no nothing to make most people want to buy an Xbox. I mean, most people buy that own an Xbox are either A, casual, or B, diehard fans. Like, I feel like if you're a core gamer and you step into your local Best Buy, Target, Walmart, whatever, GameStop, whatever it may be, and you're given the option between the three, I feel like it's very slim that you're going to 
that you're going to buy Series S, X, or Xbox One. I feel like it's so slim. And then, then you're the store associate. What do you? What? What? Hey, what games should I play on this? Um, well, the only like notable ones you can play actually on the PS4, or PS5. So it's like, oh, oh, and by the way, those games, those consoles also have like really good games you could only play there. Oh, so you're saying I should probably get that one? Yeah, <laughs> just get that. But yeah, honestly, I think the ship has sailed. I they, I'm just, you know, I tried, but they. They're, I I appreciate what they're doing. I like it, but it's not for me. Like I, I'm sorry, but call me old school. I want to buy a console that's centered around cool games to play, not services or accessibility or anything like that. I just want some fun games. And they don't really have any fun games that I can only play on that platform. All right. So yeah, here's the thing. They did come out for Psychonauts 2. It's also like, yeah, we'll come to Xbox, PlayStation, Windows, and Mac and Linux. So, it's, and like Microsoft has stated that all, every, like everything that, like all the deals and everything that was going on with game studios and everything before they were purchased are, are being honored. So, Psychonauts 2 is coming to PlayStation as well. So, I don't need to worry so about it being movie. Xbox exclusive. But yeah, okay, now that we've dragged on about. Xbox enough. Um, uh, I kind of want to go to. I want to skip over this next one and uh, go instead to Platinum teases smaller scale project. And there was actually a few things that all uh, statements that were made at Platinum this week. Uh, the Platinum Four marketing campaign has been running since well started last year. First unveiled the crowdfunding campaign for the Wonderful One, the One Remastered. Followed by Project GG, uh, a new Tokyo-based Platinum game studio. Uh, following a fourth April Fools-themed video, the Platinum 4 site added a bonus stage item on its calendar in April 2020. Almost a year on, the fifth announcement data date has changed to 2021. Speaking to VGC in a new interview, Platinum co-founder co yeah, co Atoshi... Inabe claimed the fifth reveal has taken longer than expected to prepare and said that fans should expect something smaller in scale to the previous Platinum 4 drops. So, Platinum 4 was like a less like website that came up and they announced a few new and kind of teased a few new things. And earlier this week, a fifth announcement came up on it, and now we're getting a uh, a, like a little statement from them saying like hey this game it's going to be smaller in scale we've been working on it for a while but all of covid kind of messed things up with our timelines but just keep your expectations in check for whatever this new platinum tease is um what do you think about all of this what what all do you have any thoughts on this because we brought up a f another platinum game earlier and I think um, there was another statement that you had shared with me earlier. Yeah, it was uh, Hideo Kamiya on um, uh, Bayonetta 3, pretty much telling people to forget about the game and just uh, wait until it comes out so it's a surprise. Which could be... I mean, he's a known for being a troll. He's known for doing a lot of wacky things, so who knows? Um, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Platinum, so like, Platinum is one of the... Um, I w okay, I would say Platinum is probably like the top one. Of, I know Platinum is the only studio where I will buy pretty much any game they put out just because I know like, oh, I'm going to have such a good time with like, don't get me wrong. There's like Square Enix and stuff like that, but there's still title Square will publish or even Nintendo will publish where I'm like, eh, I don't know, I'll get it some point in time. But Platinum, I'm like, oh yeah, oh, I got, I got to get it. So I'm pretty stoked to see what it is. Um. I honestly, though, I'd, I'd like Platinum to kind of step out of the action department for a bit and kind of do something else, but they they make great games. I, e, excuse me. I even enjoyed Star Fox Zero, and they worked on that. That was a good game. I, mean, I, haven't, I don't think I've ever played a Platinum game. Like, I haven't played really? Astral Chain. I haven't played Bayonetta. I haven't played um, Nier. I, played I haven't... Nier is an amazing game. I mean, like, I played the demo for Nier, and 
It didn't really the grab does me not at do all. It justice. Yeah, but all I like I've been I was thinking about getting Astral Chain when it popped up because like all because how people were enjoying that, but that was a game that was like hot for a month and then like people just dropped mm -hmm. off of it. Yeah, yeah it's just like I, I liked it though. Astral Chain was fun. Yeah, so I mean all I also I mean I don't have it here on my um, feed at all, but that was another statement they made this week. Just keeps raining news from Platinum is that all um, Astral Chain is in fact a Nintendo IP, so like it's controlled by Nintendo. That's kind of a small yeah, thing. which is kind of ugh, kind of weird because they could they could straight up have like Capcom make a sequel to Astral Chain. Like I don't know, I feel like Platinum did. A, great job with that game and if you haven't played astral chain it's probably one of the best exclusives on the switch um let's go that, that game is great um oh man yeah that was that was a good game that's one of the games where like savored <laughs> like you ever have those games where you've played once and you're like you want to replay it so bad but you're like no like i'm just gonna let it sit in my head <laughs> like i don't know why but um Man, yeah, that was that was such such a great game. Um, and it's I I really hope Platinum does do something with that again. But we'll have to see. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, like my thing behind it is just like it's just not typically the type of game I play. So like, and with Nintendo games, what like is your constantly, what I what like is your favorite genre? I think it's like I'd have to describe it as like action action adventure. Is this like because okay. like I can see that. Oh, I mean, because like I like open world games. So it's like I like oh action platformers, like action platformers, action adventure games. Because I think that's I think Zelda is technically an action adventure game, and I think people have said it's an RPG. People have said it's action adventure. Well, I mean, like it's it's RPG light. I mean, or like I mean, like. I mean, everything has RPG elements in it nowadays, all and everything. So it's just like, how how much RPG elements need to be in a game, or how much does it need to adhere to an RPG structure for it to be technically an RPG? Well, an RPG is just a role playing game, so yeah. technically, yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like that the, is an I, RPG. Yeah, but like it's like it's mostly like stats and whatnot, so it's just like, oh. I mean, there, then there's even action adventure RPG, or light RPG elements, or this then the like. But everything realistically, is, the every, only way I look at it is the, RPGs the bleed into everything true, nowadays. Yeah, like a JRPG is the only true like role playing game in my eyes because most Western games would just have like RPG in there just because like there's abilities. I mean, to me, an RPG is a lot more numbers focused like it's like where you're looking at where like you're looking at your stats more and like there's like heavy on the like where it's just like okay you have this weapon does x number of damage or like you have this ability and it'll times that a bit that attack by like two or something or like fire damage so like but like every with the depth that games have gotten into it everything kind of has rpg elements but like where like you for it to be like an RPG RPG in my mind, it's just like it really needs to be focusing on those like number based mechanics. Like I like to say, like RPGs are games where like you got to go get better numbers so that you can numbers them with higher numbers. Yeah, it's just very stats, it's, um, uh, focused, but it depends because sometimes it's it's handled really well. And then sometimes it's like your standard like ability. Real like one of the best JRPGs known to man, in my opinion, is Dragon Quest because of how simple it keeps things. There's no convoluted battle system. There's no like this, that, and the fourth. It's just a traditional turn based JRPG. You know, very you earn skill points and get new skills with those. <laughs> um, it, you know, um, and then a lot of Western RPGs, I think, do pretty good. Most Western RPGs realistically aren't turn based, um, and I think they do. They generally do a good job. Like The Witcher Three, I've yet to actually play that, but I've heard 
you know nothing but great things about the uh the witcher and then even you know say what you want about cyberpunk it i feel like it's still a good game um there's still or a good game there whatever you want to say um and that's technically an rpg zelda is weird for me because zelda is it, it, obviously it's a you know it's it's a japanese is developed in japan um for the western market and fun fact zelda is not really popular in japan um to put it into perspective oh, yeah. for you mm. ocarina of time and uh breath of the wild are the only zelda titles that have sold over a million copies in japan wow me my I mean, like, I think my thing is, like, like I think I brought, like, I, I brought this up to you in, like, a conversation that we had one day off the air was, like, I, th like, I told you I thought that, like, um, act, like, art games, like, Phoenix Rising was the modern day equivalent of platformer collectathons <laughs> or something like that. Where and I tried to make that point to you. It was just like, cause like I grew up on playing games like Banjo Kazooie, ban all like I really loved Banjo Kazooie and all Donkey Kong sixty four. These like platformer collectathons, and I tried drawing the uh, all the line between that and like Phoenix Rising, where it's just like, oh, you go around and you get like honeycombs for your health upgrades. You and Banjo, you all. You collect notes and like you get new abilities, and it's just like, it's just like it's like I think the they I really do feel like they share a vein in common, where it's just like, where, or so, so it's like it's, it's somewhere in that like, sort of area. Yeah, it's, it's tricky though because, the. And the 3D collect collectathon platformer, I feel like, is a genre that doesn't need to be touched in terms of like changing things up. I feel like those games are always fun. Like I've I've never played, I've never had a bad time with a true sandbox 3D game. Like right. I just I think they're always fun. All right, so the uh, I think we're, we might be getting close to the end of the episode because like last one in the first segment I was recording, I think I was at like. 45 minutes and now i'm at 51 minutes so we need to start wrapping this up and like also like i feel like we've gotten close to two hours today but like we're just really going off the rails a lot yeah, oh we were oh but like it's just like but you can just you can edit like what i guess some of it out right i guess some yeah of i mean i don't want to do a heavy edit though oh but like kicking it back like, I, like, kicking back to platformers and everything, it's just, like, and Jack and everything, like, people love to hate on Donkey Kong 64, and I think I've, yeah, I've, I've, I've currently, like, I think I figured out why, because it is collectathon the collectathon, like, because, yeah. like, you have the five, like, you're not playing just one character, you're playing five different characters, and you have to go through each of the world's as each of those characters to get all of the things so it's just like you're playing five different characters you have to backtrack through locations all oh, multiple times to get everything as that character find, like you can't switch each character on the fly you have yeah to, like, you have to go to a barrel to do it oh so it's just like terrible. it's collectathon the collectathon it's just like because of how much stuff you have to collect you have to collect regular bananas as each kong you have there are golden bananas that you can only get at certain Kongs. They're, like, each Kong has blueprints that they need to find. Each Kong has coins that they need to find. It's just, like, there is so much that they throw at you for each of those Kongs. And, like, I think that's why they hate on it. But, like, Jack like Jack and Daxter, I was thinking about this as I was playing. What is, uh, it's so much fun because you only have two collectibles in the game that you have to find. And you're just one character. So, you there's two... There's... Yeah, there's 2,000 precursor orbs and 101 all and 101 all power cells that you have to collect. And it's just like there's it's e like it's easy to spend like maybe half an hour to an hour in one level 
and you can just bust those out because you're all all your move you have all of the moves that you're gonna have at the start of the game so it's awesome. just like you can just you can just crush each area as you go through it and it's just like so it, which makes it fun because you don't have to backtrack and you don't have to go and get like 50 billion things i like that a lot i like that you start with your full arsenal um uh, yeah, I do like that. I like and I hate it. I, I, I mean, like it's I simple, but it's fun. Like yeah. it, like at ten hours, like ten to twelve hours for the whole thing. Like I played it the first night, I was like thirty something percent through it. I played it through it the second night, I was sixty something percent through it. And then, like, I think I played it one more day for a little. Like, I so yeah, so I did, finished it yesterday. So that was Thursday, and I was just like. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. No, I've, I must have gotten it on Monday then. This was like, picked it up Monday, 30% second night. Wait, maybe it was Tuesday. Maybe it was Tuesday, because I felt like, I felt like yesterday I was going to stop at some point and finish it today, but I ended up powering through it and I got through all in the last segment last night. So it was just, I feel like, I feel like I did it in three days. Not bad, especially yeah. for platinum. Yeah, but all, um, yeah. I think okay. So there was an inside infinite blog post. You could just go to Xbox. What I mean, go to the Halo all um, blog for that. That is a long, long thing to get through. Oh, uh, do what else do we want to talk? About? So that's all that was in my run of show doc. Then I got a few other small announcements. A lot of small updates. I think we're just going to run through some of this real quick at the end. Uh, Bleeding Edge is now not being supported anymore. All oh, that was from Ninja Theory. Ninja Theory. For all the two people that play that game. Yeah, it's just like, that was, like, they just missed the boat on that. Like, yeah, it's probably one guy in the world who's like, oh, man. Oh, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, but everyone's playing, oh, whatchamacallit, oh. Overwatch and when Overwatch Two comes out, they're just gonna that that's just gonna renew the surge for that. So yeah, it's sad for the people that actually enjoyed the game, but like it had a fun style looking, but like I never thought to pick it up. Oh. Yeah, I would, I would not play that. Sonic the Hedgehog, oh, voice actor, all oh, leaving the role. So yeah, Roger Craig Smith has. All, but apparently in his tweet he, yeah. Well, ten years was an amazing run. Onwards, onward to new zones. Much love to the fans who've been so kind. It's been an honor. And then like it shows like a blue broken heart, um, in the tweet. I'm just One like. Thing I have to say about that is I actually did not like Roger Craig Smith when he first started voicing Sonic because I hated the voice so bad. I was just like. Oh, this is not Sonic. And then it kind of grew me. It did. He, his voice for Sonic definitely grew on me. So it does kind of suck, but hopefully they have someone good next. Or or bring back Jason Griffith or Ryan Drummond. That would be nice. Um, yeah. We'll have to see. Yeah, so hopefully they're doing new things with the character. Um, Roger Kirk Smith has kind of gotten older, so maybe they just want a younger voice. Um... Marvel's Avengers to showcase Hawkeye next gen versions in February. All the next gen versions in February. That's on premiering on February sixteenth. One of the things that like I heard is just like their last character was like a bow user. Now they have another bow user coming. As it's like, right. Says something about that game. All they still like they need to fix a lot of that game from what I've heard. Yeah, that that game just needs. To, I, don't, I feel like that. Oh gosh, yeah, it's just a, it's just a, just just a game. Like I, there, yeah, and I had a, I had high hopes for that in terms of like how well it do, just because of how fr insanely popular Marvels is. So I was like, this game can't do be can't flop, but it flopped. How did that? How did you? Your game had to suck, or just not be fun. If you have the freaking Avengers IP. And it doesn't sell well. Yeah. The the Avengers, which is literally the highest grossing film of all time, 
and yet, like, what? <laughs> I don't know man, where that... I Honestly, though, I blame the success of that on not having the actual cast, but we all know they well, couldn't afford the actual I mean, cast. they wanted to do their own thing and not be tied to the cinematic universe, and I feel like that's a smart decision, but, like, I mean, it's that, that's in, like in fighting a, an uphill a, battle, though. From a standpoint, it definitely is, but in a sales standpoint, probably not, just because... Most people are gonna be like, "Hey, like, especially little kids, they're not gonna, they're gonna be like, wait, what? That's not my Iron Man, or that's not R B J or R D J." All right, all um, there is a uh, Viva Festivale experience the Carnival spirit with Animal Crossing New Horizons free update. Um, what day does this is coming? Oh, uh, yeah, new system. Well, update will arrive on January 28th, where it brings festival, um, festival event on February 15th, Dancer of Pave will arrive to your island's plaza to usher in some confetti and carnival spirit on the day of the event. You can capture colorful feathers floating on your island with your net and trade them to Pave to receive a passionate dance number in return. Rainbow feathers seem to be especially rare sight, so be sure to catch them and trade them with Pave. Invite friends over to your island or visit there to partake in the festival and the festivities together. New reactions, new clothing, all um, seasonal items are coming. Um, you we've both played all um, Animal Crossing, right? Yeah. I mean, like I had fun with it. Like I bought, like I said, uh, I was going to buy it if I got laid off from work from all due to COVID and I did and I bought it so I had something to do for those few weeks I had fun with it back in spring but like I quickly fell off of it I yeah. jumped back in for the Halloween updates because I'm I like spooky stuff and all that but I haven't touched it since yeah I haven't really I've played it much um it was really I had a good time with it when it first came out and I like thought i could take the approach where i like play a little bit every day um but i still got tired i mean like i could still jump into it and have fun but it's just like I, I i don't know it's one of those games that's kind of always in rotation and a little like in a in a weird way where it'll get five or ten minutes here or there because i own it digitally so i can just you know jump in and out yeah i mean it's like um but it's very rare that i play that game for like over 30 minutes at a time yeah it, i mean it's like games as a service type thing it's just like you have to constantly be updating it and like maintaining your town and doing stuff with it to all if you really want to get the full value out of it and that's just not how i play games i'm not a i used to it was it's such a bummer because when it first came out it was so therapeutic for me i would literally wake up in the morning and i'm i'm a early bird so i'm i'm generally up pretty early and i had this routine for a, a, like a solid two months after the game came out i'd wake up make a cup of coffee and just relax to some animal crossing and like those are some of the best mornings ever just like nice relaxed like it's like six seven o'clock in the morning on a cup of coffee just playing some animal crossing and i did that for a while and now it's just like meh it's there but i don't think i'll ever dip my toes back into it all right the last thing we're gonna do a quick update on is all ign this comes from ign uh IO developer um is Hitman's James Bond won't be based on any previous actor. This is cool and neat. This is like I IO creators of Hitman are making James Bond and they're doing the same thing that Ninte that Microsoft tried I mean not Microsoft, oh well Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix tried to do with the Avengers was all like they're making their own thing so like they're not having to compare it against daniel craig but in with james bond being a franchise that has been known for having all different bonds change out and switch out and whatnot i don't think they're fighting the same uphill battle battle with it and even daniel craig as much as i like him all i feel like he's kind of at the end of his stint getting towards the end of his stint with um james bond so yeah, he's been playing james bond for a while a long time so it'll be um interesting 
see like seeing what sort of James Bond that they come up with. Or I mean, I talked we talked about it before we went on air, but what are your like? What, how do you feel about James Bond? Um, I mean, like solid movies. Um, like it's definitely one of those movies where if you're flipping through the channels and see James Bond, you're like, oh, I'll keep it here. Um, but for a video, like video game wise, I don't, I don't think I'm not. Yeah, I probably wouldn't buy it honestly. Just yeah, because like it's all right. You know, it's just yeah, I don't think I'd get it unless it's like really freaking groundbreaking or something like that. But I, I don't think I'm gonna buy it at all. Me? The only game I have my eye on right now, and I've said this before, and I saw it today, and I was very tempted to buy it, is Ghost of Tsushima. I need to freaking play that, but I don't know why I'm not. I don't want to buy it at full price, even though that game is worth full price. Me, for, for me with James Bond, it's just like, I enjoyed the earlier movies, like the ones where it got silly, and like, there's one movie where like, I think he gets delivered parts in like a suitcase, or like several small boxes, and he builds a one-person plane. Annette and I was just like those are the types of movies I enjoy like the silly spy stuff where you're like where you, like, you got all the silly gadgets and everything like that but whereas the newer movies have become a lot more grounded it's just like they're just not that level of fun with them anymore in my opinion but with how everyone how like the praise that people speak about the Hitman series is oh I'm really interested to see where what happens with um, the the Bond game that's under development. I don't think it's something I'd pick up $60 because, like, the stealth yeah, no. games it, aren't really something I'm into. Uh, but, like, the big thing behind the Hitman games is, like, they're supposed to be, like, more puzzle-y, like, trying to figure things out. And I think IO... Sounds like IO has really, like, figured out the sauce combination that they want to work with. And I would say if there's a team to make a James Bond game, it, it should be them. So it'll be interesting seeing how that game comes out and how it reviews. But, okay, I think that's going to do it, though, for this week. Is there anything else that you want to um, discuss? No, I think I'm going to play... Um, I, I don't know, I think I'm going to rethink what I want to play right now. I always have ideas of what i want to jump into but yeah not, yeah not too much and uh obviously we'll see you guys same time well same same time ish um uh, but next week all right oh uh, just quick heads up oh wait that's what i wanted to talk about as well i wanted to talk about why we did the name change um uh, so we changed recently from being neo arcadia to tanuki tales oh uh, that was mostly because neo arcadia um Dom, do you want to talk about that? Because I was the name that you picked. Yeah. Um. So obviously, ne well, ne the name behind Neo Arcadia is the um evil organization from uh, Mega Man the Zero series. So when I first made the channel, I was like, "Cool, we'll name it that." Um. But it it wasn't like it was just a name. It wasn't anything that like that. that um. That I, it was like a, a placeholder. Like I needed something, and like that was it. And then obviously there's a lot of new Arcadias floating around on YouTube. And then when Dane took um, partial or ha half ownership of the uh, the channel and we started doing the podcast, I was thinking about, we obviously had to change the name. And that's where I came up with Tanuki Tales because obviously two tales, two people, Nintendo related-ish kind of thing. And so, yeah, that's what... Um, we're changing it too. And then we have um, some of our, one of our friends is working on uh, new art. So hopefully we'll have all that situated. And I've got some stuff planned for next month um, that you guys should look forward to. And then other than that, that's, that's about it. All right. So you can find us on Instagram at Tanuki Tales, all one word, or on Twitter at, at Tanuki Tales under at tanuki underscore tales all on twitter all follow us on twitter i'm trying to be better about letting people know when we go live for these i tweeted out that we were going live all earlier today for this and hopefully we're, we're because this isn't obviously our job we don't try we're going to try and stay to a sort of regular schedule but if you want to watch us stream this live and 
be a part of that, then you can all, then that's the place to follow us to know when it is that we're going live. All right. But apart from that, I think that we're done for today. All right. Yep. So have a nice day and we'll see you next week.